I'm Pauline Kempf. Um, I am a Vaden uh, based here in the, in the Bay Area. I live actually in San Mateo, not, so not downtown San Francisco. I moved here two years ago, so I'm still pretty new to the area, but um, I started my life here as a teacher, still trying to figure out who to play with and the how you know the freelance music scene would uh, look like. And now it, it's actually pretty nice. I teach, um, I play um, in little local orchestras and a um, bunch of chamber music. And I'm also a Baroque violinist, so I play many, many early music concerts. So I was born in Paris, in France, and um, I got very lucky, age of five, my family hosted a Russian violin teacher who has just arrived from Moscow. And um, she basically trained, she just tested my ear, and I was able to sing the pitches she was playing on the piano, and that's how I enrolled in her violin class at the local uh, conservatory uh, in my neighborhood. And I stayed there age from, I of five until I was perhaps 15 and you know I was enrolled in so many classes choir, solfege and chamber music, orchestra and violin obviously and then um, age of 14 is sort of the time where I decided uh, that I had to go perhaps on a more professional path so I went to a special high school for um, musicians I would have school from 8 to 2 p.m. and then just time for my practice and rehearsals and concerts. Then I moved to Switzerland for my undergrad, three years, then I went to Austria for my grad school. And then I met an American and on a French train who happens to be my husband now. And so I moved to the States and before San Francisco, I was in Chicago for four years for another grad, grad school time. So, and now I'm here. Um, the one teacher I can think of um, is, the, um, is that young teacher who started her sort of teacher career with me. Uh, she was perhaps like 25 and she started me when I was 10 and brought me to college when I was 18. And you know, I, I, I just played with her on a summer festival in France and in chamber music. And, and she is the most inspiring person um, I've ever met. Uh, and I had many <laughs> teachers because I've been in school for a long time. But Saskia was um, a very important person for me, not necessarily as a teacher or a human being, but just a musician. She had this very powerful way to transmit her love of music and very genuinely uh, through her teaching. Um, I would attend all of her concerts and um, and very early on when I was 14, 15, she invited me to play um, with her colleagues, you know, big, I mean, for me at the time, big pieces and big experiences and taking me very seriously, although I was 15, so I <laughs> she perhaps shouldn't have. And um, and yeah, I was just this summer back, back home playing Dvorak, Viola Quintet and Mozart Clinic Quintet and it's just a delight now, you know, to, we're both professional musicians and, um, yeah, very impactful as a person. There's no day to day. I never have a, a day that resembles another one. Um, the, the challenge is actually to establishing a routine. <laughs> um, so I'll tell you about the routine I have, and then it's just a chaos, a beautiful, awesome, funny, and yeah, great chaos. I start my day with 30 minutes of yoga and 30 minutes of scale. That's the thing that I always do. And usually my mornings are pretty free, uh, so I have that time to, to practice. Um, I make sure I practice things in advance so that when I'm on the wave, I'm <laughs> just <laughs> surfing. And, <laughs> and that's, um, yeah, so that's a moment where I'm by myself in the house, uh, no phone calls, no rehearsals, just personal practice. Um, and then I usually teach in the afternoon. So I have my time with my little students, or oh, my teenagers. And at night, you could just go to rehearsal or concerts. And you never have weekends, so that's a bit challenging, but you get to travel and to meet very, very great people on, on the road. And uh, you, yeah, to travel 
whether from one city to the other or you travel to other countries and you you experience different ways of playing music and different types of music and um, yeah so those are my weeks pretty fr very fruitful <laughs> I do. So I, I have two, two violins. I have one modern violin that I use for the modern rep and then I have a, a Baroque violin um, that I just acquired this summer, so it's exciting news. Um, my modern violin is a French uh, violin from 1917, uh, Sylvestre Mocotel. Um, and I bought this violin my, my last year of high school, right before the college auditions. And on that particular violin, I would say my D string. So. Um, this is a particular, um, particularly most loved uh, string. I mean, one could think, oh, the E string, because I'm a violinist. But no, that D string, I, I go back and back to it. Um, or, you know, when you go very high on the G string, it has a very human um, sound to it. And um, so perhaps it's not a great question, a great answer from a violinist, but my, the, the lowest strings, yeah. Um, that those are my favorite tunes. <laughs> you may not know someone at all, and yet um, you spend half hour, or like an hour with that person sitting in the same living room and suddenly you get very intimate to that person. Whether you watch him or, or her, <laughs> or you just listen to to their playing and suddenly is that the two souls click or in the most cases <laughs> or in the best cases and and there is that time where you get sort of intimate and there's a conversation happening and it's constant discovery whether you are a prof professional chamber music group where you meet every day for three to four hours or just a sight reading night uh, among friends and um, it's this resonance be between four or three or six sounds that is uh, very appealing to me. You don't get that um, level of intimacy if you play with 79 other musicians on stage. And I like that. Plus the repertoire is just gorgeous. I want to surprise myself. I want to surprise our audiences. I want people to have the reaction you can have whenever you, you look at an abstract art painting. Either you hate it, or you like it, or you wonder, or you're surprised, but there's like a reaction, there's an impact. And I want this to happen, whether I'm preparing those wave concerts with my colleagues, or whether I'm on stage uh, with them. I want everybody to be not to have any expectations. I want them to be surprised and, um, and not knowing what's going to happen. And I want to try, not that I dislike that, that way of uh, making music, but I want to try to abandon that wall between a stage where you have the musicians dressed in black, looking very serious because this is classical music, and the people in the audience being a bit intimated, intimated, I don't know how to say it, being shy because they don't have the classical music background, you know, they don't have the skill to understand the symphony that is being played. And I'd like people to get into our music making circles uh, without too much difficulties. I want this to be simple. You open the, uh, the, the door of an art gallery and you have four people just playing music and it's just easy to grab a seat, a beer, to listen and to enjoy your evening. <laughs>